you tell your students to line up in your classroom, what happens? Do they orderly go get in line? Or is it like WWE just broke out and everybody's trying to be first? Hi, I'm Amy Murray from Teaching Exceptional Kinders, and in full disclosure, my line was like WWE before I decided enough is enough. So I'm here to share a very simple way to get your kids to line up. Number your students. And there are people out there who will say, kids aren't numbers and da 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 da. And you're not wrong, but numbering them made life so much easier and easier to organize everything. I gave my students numbers in alphabetical order by last name. So number one was, we started at the A's and we went on through. And that is how we lined up every single time. I put little stars that had numbers on the floor. Our classroom was carpeted, so they just were like sit spots that were numbered on the floor. I'm sure that you can find a way to do that. I will link sit spots that have numbers down below if you're interested. But that way they knew where to go. And giving them a place to stand was an important piece to this, not just numbering them, but when they were spaced out so that they weren't touching the person in front of them merely by being in line. If their feet were on their number, they weren't able to touch, I mean, with their hands they could, but like their feet weren't touching the person in front or behind them. So it gave them personal space and a specific spot to be every time. Now, I often get asked, how do kids remember their number? So we would start this the first day of school. Their cubbies were in the same order. So when they came in to put their backpack in their cubby, that was the same number. And so they quickly learned whose cubby was next to whose, and then they quickly learned who was in line near them. So even if they didn't know their number, because not all kindergartners know their numbers coming into school, they were able to find familiar faces. And some of the kids who figured it out more quickly than others would be like, hey, so-and-so, you're supposed to be here. And they would help each other out. We practiced a bunch of times the first couple of days, but honestly, by the end of that first week, when I would go get them from specials, they could get a number order without numbers on the ground, and they just knew what their order was. It was a total, and I, this sounds dramatic, it wasn't, it was a total game changer in my classroom. We were no longer whining about cutting in line, which, who came up with that term, by the way? Cutting in line? No one's cutting. No one's slicing anybody. Jipping is fine. I mean, it's not fine. It's a problem, too. But let's use that word. Where did this cutting term come from? Okay, so I digress. But <laughs> there was no whining. There was no pushing. There was no shoving. There was no running because everyone had a spot. You weren't trying to get first to, to be the first in line. You weren't trying to be the last in line because you all have kids do that too because they figure out quickly they can goof off in the back of the line. They weren't trying to get next to their very bestest friend because they couldn't. They had a spot. Then I hear people with last names at the end of the alphabet complain that they're always last or at the end of the line. I get that. I mean, I was growing up, I, my last name was G, so I was always towards the beginning. And now our last name's M, so my kids are always smack dab in the middle of the line. Um, I did have a kiddo one year who was on the spectrum, and he was our caboose, or towards the end, and he did not want to always be last. That really, really troubled him. And so I had this lovely little one in my class who just switched with him. And so she was last and she didn't mind being last and he was right in front of her and it worked out splendidly because she was also a very good buddy <laughs> and so they would get where they needed to be. So you can come up with simple solutions like that if you have a student who's really adverse to always being at the end. Um, that was how we solved that problem that year. Generally speaking, kids just go with the flow. The other thing that we did to combat that was every day I had, I didn't do classroom jobs. That's a whole nother <laughs> story. Um, and you can see down below, I will link what we did instead of classroom jobs, but we had a helper of the day and the helper of the day was also the line leader. 
So that person would just, their number would be empty and they would go to the front of the line and everyone got a turn to be the line leader. And so that rotated. So you weren't always there every 20 some days, you got to be the line leader as well. And so that's another way to break up the same line over and over again. Um, I would love to hear what your solutions to lining up have been. Let me know down in the comments. And if you have been struggling with lining up and the procedures for lining up and you've been doing, you know, blue table, you can line up first and red table, you can line, and you're still, it's just chaos. Give this a try because then you can say, okay, blue table, you can go get in line and they just go get on their numbers. Nobody's rushing. Nobody's pushing, fighting. I'm telling you, it is worth it every, it's worth it. It's worth every minute that it takes to practice. It works and it saves you so much headache in the long run. So I will link everything you need down below. Let me know if you give it a try. I can't wait to hear how it works for you in your classroom. Like you said, I'm Amy Murray from Teaching Exceptional Kinders. Here's how to get in touch with me if you need me or just drop a comment down below. While you're there, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Until next time, have an exceptional day.